The Hyundai i20 has always been brilliant at giving buyers lots of car and lots of kit for not a lot of money. The latest i20 continues that trend, but these days it also provides a lot more besides. One of the i20's newfound attributes is style. Hyundai small cars in recent years have looked, well, a bit dreary, but this car has some real verve in the way it looks. With these intricately shaped headlamps and three layers of mesh grille, there is plenty going on at the front end. And the steep angle of the windscreen also gives it quite a sporty, low-slung look. So do these rear pillars finished in black, which give the roof a kind of floating effect. You'll want to avoid the entry-level S trim because it misses out on the alloy wheels and front fog lights that SE trim gives you. And if you want your i20 to look even posher, then upgrading a stage further to premium trim gives you swanky LED daytime running lights. Now granted, when you climb inside the car, you're not exactly treated to the same level of interesting design. You can mix up the colour scheme with a choice of interior finishes, but the options available aren't all that interesting and they're governed pretty strictly by your choice of paint. The ergonomics aren't ideal either because the finer points of the infotainment system are controlled through this tiny little display screen and the i20's interior isn't exactly the last word in quality or touchy feeliness but it is very solidly built and it should be really hard wearing. It should also be noted that there is a lot of standard equipment in here. Now this is a fairly high spec premium version but it's still impressive that you're getting things like automatic lights and wipers, climate control, cruise control and parking sensors all as standard. But it's practicality that's probably the i20's strongest suit. The rear seats have more space than in most super minis and because there's no transmission tunnel and a wide middle seat then sitting three people in the back isn't out of the question. The boot is big as well and it's a nice square shape. What's more there's a movable false floor that lets you level out the step in the load area when you fold the back seats down. Get the i20 out on the road and you'll quickly realise that this is a really relaxed, easy-going little car to poodle around in. The pedals and the gear shift have a really nice, slick, precise action and the steering feels hefty enough to inspire confidence but it's also light enough to make parking the car really easy. It doesn't do too badly in a set of bends either. It feels grippy and secure and body lean is pretty well contained although it doesn't have the agility or the engagement that you get in a Ford Fiesta. It's not quite as smooth riding either, with a slightly unsettled feel over the rippled surfaces that cover much of the UK road network. However, importantly, it never feels uncomfortable. There's a range of petrol and diesel engines available, and the one we've got in this car is the one we think is going to make most sense to most people. It's a 1.2 litre petrol engine with 83 brake horsepower and it makes the i20 really affordable to buy. With fuel economy of more than 55 miles per gallon, it makes it pretty affordable to run as well. Granted, the performance you get is rather leisurely and the engine makes itself heard at motorway speeds, but most super mini buyers are gonna favor thriftiness over performance any day of the week. In short, the i20 is a very likeable little car with good looks, practicality and exceptionally generous standard equipment on its side. It's also really affordable to buy and pretty affordable to run too. If those things are more important to you than a groundbreaking driving experience or a swanky interior, you should definitely give it a look. <laughs>